8.1.6 are pretty much straightforward. The tricky question here is 8.1.7. Let me show you how. So the first question 8.1.1 is saying that let's define an acid in terms of the Lord Bronsted theory, right? That is pretty much straightforward. An acid is a proton donor, right? An acid is a proton uh, donor. And then 8.1.2 says uh, write down the formula of one conjugate acid base pair in reaction one, right? So how are we going to identify it? We're going to identify it using 8.1.1, right? Which compound donated a proton? So let's go ahead and look at uh, reaction one. So if you look at reaction one here, you will see that uh, initially we had H NO3 and then on the right hand side we have NO3 minus so HNO3 has donated a proton right so this is uh, our acid and what is left NO3 minus this is our conjugate base right so for 8.1.2 uh, we can say uh, HNO3 and NO3 minus right uh, now you can see fully well that we are only left with h2o and h3o plus so if you didn't say hno3 and no3 minus you could have said h2o and h3o plus right that would also be correct and then 8.1.3 is saying that is the solution formed in reaction one acidic or basic right let's give a reason for our answer this solution formed in reaction one is definitely going to be acidic right let's be technical a bit why are we saying that it is acidic it is acidic because of the presence of um h H3O plus, right? If we have H3O plus or if we have uh, H plus, then that would make a solution uh, acidic, right? But then here we cannot say H plus because we have H3O plus. But then in a different situation, you can possibly have H plus. You should still know that uh, that solution is acidic, right? Let's do 8.1.4 real quick. So 8.1.4 is saying that uh, let's define the term. Uh, Amphalite, right? An amphalite is a substance that can act as a base and as an acid, right? Uh, that's basically what an amphalite is, right? And 8.1.5 is saying that let's write down the formula of a substance that acts as an amphalite in the reactions above. So basically, if you don't know the definition, then you cannot get 8.1.5, right? Um, so let's go to our reactions and yeah, do some analysis here. So in reaction one, H2O is acting as a base in reaction one. Why are we saying it's acting as a base? It's acting as a base because it accepts a proton, right? A proton acceptor is a base. So in reaction one, H2O is a base, right? Let's go to reaction two. In reaction two, H2O donates a proton, right? And we are left with OH minus. So it's acting as an acid because it is a proton donor. So now in reaction two, H2O is an acid. And that's an amphalite, right? In one reaction, it decides to act as a base. And in another reaction, it decides to act in, as an acid. So now we can see that uh, 8.1.5, uh, the formula of our amphalite is H2O. And we can move to 8.1.6. So 8.1.6 is saying that uh, explain the answer by referring to the role of this substance in reaction 1 and reaction 2. Uh, so in reaction 1, uh, H2O acts uh, as a base, right? And then uh, in reaction 2, H2O it acts as a 
an acid right in relation to it acts as an acid and yeah that's 8.1.6 basically now the question uh we are interested in is 8.1.7 right uh, it's not really too difficult but uh, there's a mistake that many people would make in this kind of equation so it is saying that 100 centimeter cube of hno3 of a concentration 0 0.2 mole per, per decimeter cube right is diluted to 0 0.16 moles per decimeter cube. Calculate the volume of water that must be added to the 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube of HNO3. Right? Uh, this is really uh, you know a short formula we can use for this one. We can say that C2 multiplied by V2 is equal to C1 multiplied by V1. So now let me explain to you why this formula works. This formula works because um, the number of moles is equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume, right? If you change the volume of the substance, right, the concentration is also going to change such that the number of moles is still the same right <laughs> that, that's how it essentially works if you change the volume you can you don't have any effect on the number of moles they will stay the same because the concentration is going to slightly change too and we'll end up having the same number of moles so that that is what is happening here we're changing the volume so the number of moles uh remains intact right so let's go ahead and you know solve our problems uh so we're saying that we ending up with a concentration of um, 0 0.16, right? So concentration 2 is 0 0.16. And um, so we're going to have V2 because we don't know what V2 is, right? And then concentration 1, we had an initial concentration of 0 0.2 uh, with an initial volume of uh, 100 centimeter cube. Right? We don't really have to change this 100 centimeter cube, but then for the sake of consistency, let's change it to decimeter cube, right? Uh, because if we start uh, getting to the habit of not converting centimeter cube, you might even forget uh, to convert when you have to. So if we do this arithmetic here, then uh, V2 should be equal to 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.16. And the answer here, I'm getting a volume of 0 0.125 um, decimeter cube. And that's our answer. <laughs> exactly. It is not our answer, right? Uh, I'm sure some of y'all uh, realize the mistake I'm making. The question again says, calculate the volume of water that must be added to the 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube, right? So initially, we had a volume of 0 0.1 uh, decimeter cube. Now we have a volume of 0 0.125 decimeter cube. What volume of water was added to the initial mixture, right? That's what the question is asking us to do. So you can just leave your answer here. You have to go a step forward, right? And say that uh, the volume that was added, right, was equals to 0 0.125 minus 0 0.1, which will be equals to 0 0.025 decimeter cube.